Welcome back to a new season of Sports Path. This week, we take a look at White Bear Lake's opening football game of the season. After that, we'll take a look at some soccer highlights as the North boys are storming through the conference standings. We'll see if they do that success. And finally, we will wrap things up by seeing what Hill Murray has been up to with the new stadium upgrades. You won't want to miss the package that we have for you about that. All that and more as we take you down the sports path. Ball finds the hole up the middle. Steps up, goes deep, left side. Receiver, open, counting. Touchdown, Titans! Takes a nice shot outside the goal box. And he will break the 0 0 tie. Fantastic shot by Ken Lop Solon. Giller makes a move, a good one. Opportunity here, the Bears score! Strike first. He's at the 40. He's down to the 30. The 20. 10. 5. Touchdown. Jalen Bryant. Why not? What a beautiful run. Maureen there. Fights her off the puck. Opportunity here. Another sit. And a goal! Second chance effort for the Pioneers. Put the icing on the cake, if you will, Michael. Just go down and got to the outside and said, good evening and good night. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a brand new season of Sports Path. We have a lot of great highlights to show you from the beginning of the 2016 fall season. But before that, let's take a look at a few changes Sports Path went through over our summer break. First off, you may have noticed a new face sitting next to me. That is our new co-host, John Miller. John, why don't you tell the fans a little bit about yourself? Well, Sam, I graduated from Park High School in 2010. I spent the next five years after that in the United States Marine Corps. Now I'm working towards my bachelor's degree in broadcast journalism. I plan on going to Century and then uh, the University of Minnesota. We did some lacrosse games last year, so I'm ready to do this show with you. Let's have a great time. Uh, for sure, John. Glad to have you. i got to say it's a weight off my shoulders not having to do the show by myself and definitely look forward to uh, you being with us the whole time. Anytime, Sam. That's what I'm here for. Another thing we've also been working on over the summer is a brand new Sports Path set. In fact, we are even shooting in a new studio just across the hall from the old studio that we used to shoot Sports Path in. Along with shooting in a new studio, we have made some upgrades to the set. Yes, yeah, Sam, the set is looking great this year thanks to our producer, Anthony Miller. And a little bit of an upgrade from last season, but let's get that all out of the way. And let's get to some sports news. Uh, sounds like a good plan. I know that's what the fans came here for. So TV19 Sports Fan, if you remember at the end of last season, we brought you a new segment called the Fab Five Minute. Well, in this segment, I compile all of the key scores and moments from the past two weeks and cram it into one minute, or at least I'll try. So let's get it started for this week. Well, now, Mata Midai has started the football season off on the right foot at 2-0, including a big 19-7 win over St. Thomas Academy on opening night. Well, every game is crucial after, uh, after the conference restructuring that took place last year, and all eight regular season games are conference games for the 10 members of the East Metro Red District, which includes most of the teams from the old Metro East football conference. Now Andy Boyan has led the way for Mott offense so far, leading the team in receiving and hauling in two touchdowns. In volleyball, North St. Paul is off to a very impressive start. Now the Polars seem to be one of the top teams every fall, but this year they start 9-0 and are coming off a win against rival Roseville last night. Now that will do it for our Fab Five Minute or Fab Five maybe 50 seconds or so, but we just wanted to give you a little more information that we couldn't get into the rest of our show. Sam, you've really been practicing that Fab Five Minute. Last year you were going over a minute. Great job, as usual. Still not as quite a minute, but yeah, I like to be under rather than over, and mm -hmm. I think my producer does too. Exactly. As you mentioned, Matamidi is off to a great start in the 2016 football season. Let's take a look at the rest of the standings, starting with the Metro East Red Division. 
Yeah, Matamita, as I said, is 2-0 and tied for, the fir uh, tied for first in conference. The Zephyrs host Henry Sibley this Friday and our way to the new stadium at Hill Murray on the 23rd. In fact, we will bring you that game right here on TV19. North St. Paul has had a rough or has had a tough start to the season after making it to the state tournament last year. The Polars are 0-2 after losses to South St. Paul and St. Thomas Academy. Both excellent teams. They look to bounce back this week in a matchup against Tartan. A game that will also be broadcast right here on TV19. Excellent. Now we're going to take a look at the Metro East Blue Division. White Bear Lake is 0-2 on the year. The Bears lost to Rosemount to open the season and fell to Forest Lake to open the conference slate. They'll host each East Ridge in a tough contest this week, then travel to play Creighton Durham Hall the week after that. Sam, I don't know about you, but I'm sure happy it's full football season. Speaking of White Bear Lake, we were at the opening game of the season against Rosemont. We would start this game at White Bear Lake with the scoreless first quarter. The Irish would take a 3-0 lead after a field goal by number 18, Kenny Watkins. The White Bear Lake defense had an impressive goal line stand to hold the Irish to just three points. Later in the second quarter, number 10, Blake Taminen makes a spectacular, throws a terrific pass to Blake Lanou. Spectacular catch out of bounds, both feet in. This would lead to a trip to the end zone on a rushing touchdown by number 29, Blake Schimmel, giving Rosemont a 10 to nothing lead. We'll take you into about six minutes into the second quarter as uh, White Bear Lake's QB number five, Daniel Lyons, is forced to drop back, drop back to pass. He throws an errant pass, which is a greatly intercept, great hit crash for an interception by the Rosemont Irish. That interception would lead to a great rushing touchdown by number six, Connor Kleber. He runs it in, he makes a leaping dive into the end zone, which would be penalized, but touchdown still counts. Off the kickoff, White Bear Lake would get one of their biggest plays of the day, a 40-yard bomb, threading the needle, passing play to number 82, Charlie Walkler. That big play set up a touchdown for the Bears on that same drive, coming off an 11-yard run for number 24, Josiah Majess. Scores 17 to seven, extra point, three minutes to go in the third quarter. Let's see if White Bear Lake can make a comeback. Later in the fourth, Rosemont would get a bigger lead after a touchdown from number six, Connor Cleaver. Great run to get it in there with a little extra help from the defender shoving him in. Score now 24 to seven. Rosemont getting a little extra cushion in there against the White Bear Lake. On that and then an unfortunate me, scenario for the Bears later on in the fourth the quarter. Number eight, Griffin Lanou with a great read of the quarterback, and leading to a pick six for the Irish, Irish, giving the Irish a 31 to seven lead over Touchdown, the White Bear Lake Bears. Irish. The, the Bears six, did try to rally late Lanou. in the fourth quarter to get oh, some more points it. on the board. They had a few great passing plays, ending that? with. Uh, a great pass from number two, number 81, Blake Charles, bringing the Bears right to the goal line. What a great catch. That was absolutely spectacular. So this would lead to an easy touchdown for number 23, James Woods, a two-yard run to get some more ports on the board. Unfortunately, folks, that was a little too late for White Bear Lake as the score would be 31-13. to The Bears will lose their opening game of the season against the Rosemount Irish. You know, John, for your first time reading over a set of highlights, you did a pretty darn good job. Uh, I don't want anybody to see my first time reading over a set of highlights. I don't think it was quite as good. Well, coming up on Sports Path, we take a look at some of your Fab Five soccer highlights where the North Boys team sits at the top of the standings. You don't want to miss this, and don't go anywhere. media from my point of view is um, organic. It's power. Public access to me uh, gives me an opportunity to get my word out to the uh, larger community of the town that I can't get to on my own. This is good programming. This is what people say, well, how come they don't ever write anything good in the news, right? This is the good news. What we're doing is critical, it's important. We have to stay energized and motivated to do this work in our community, but understand that our real mission is to hold up our part as we encourage others to hold up their part around the planet.
TV19 sports fans, we have a lot of broadcasts on the schedule, but the only way we can get those games on the TV is by the generous help of our top volunteers. We are always looking for new volunteers. All you have to do is contact Arlen Becker, take a quick class on how to run our broadcast cameras, and Arlen's contact information is listed on the screen. You can call him at 651 747 3821 or email them at arlen at onlocationtv.org. That is arlen at onlocationtv.org. You got it, John. We are always looking for volunteers to help with the broadcast, and the more volunteers we get, you know, the better those broadcasts can be. Well, welcome back to the TV19 studio and the brand new Sports Path set. We have been out to only one football game so far, but for soccer, well, that's another story. We've been out to three soccer games so far with a lot more on the schedule. So let's start off by taking a look at the Metro East girls soccer standings. Now Hill Murray and Mata Midai will most likely battle it out for the Metro East title. Both teams are ranked in the top 10 of Class 1A. The Pioneers did battle their way through a tough early season non-conference schedule, but they started off the Metro season right with two wins in two games. Mata Midai picked up their first conference win last night and look for number two tomorrow against South St. Paul. These two will get together on September the 29th in a much anticipated match. And we were actually over at North High School for a matchup between it's North and Hill Murray. It was the first Bears, conference game Hill in the Blue Metro Bears. East for both of these uh, two teams. You see the teams Blue getting Blue ready Blue. there. First goal comes with just three and a half minutes left to go Schindler, in the first half. Freshman Catherine Schindler Decides to shoot one from distance, seeing the goalie off the line, sails over the keeper's head and into the back of the net, giving the Pioneers the one to nothing advantage. Now, just two minutes later, Allie Bratland makes a nice touch around the defender and then slots it home to the right side of the goal to make it two to nothing. Bratland is also a freshman, so the freshman duo put Hill Murray up two to nothing going into the break. Then just after the break, Hill Murray will add a third. You see a long pass come in, and that is Catherine Schindler once again, somehow redirecting it out of midair and looping it over the goalkeeper for her second goal of the game. That would be the last one for Hill Murray. They'll take this one three to nothing to open Metro East action with a W. All right, let's take a look at the Suburban East Conference with White Bear Lake. Continues to stay right outside of the top 10 in the state after some tough early season competition. They lost their conference opener 4-3 to Creighton Durham Hall. The Bears look for their first conference victory tomorrow against Stillwater and have a big match against Woodbury next Tuesday. So good luck to the Bears. Absolutely. Well, now that's it for the girls uh, side of things. Let's go over to the boys. And uh, North, we'll take a look at Metro East first of all, where North is the dominant team once again this year. They are ranked seventh in Class 2A. The Polars lost their first match of the season, but have rebounded nicely, winning all of their games since then, including starting 2-0 in the Metro East Conference with a victory over Hastings 5-1 last night. The Polar's biggest, Polar's biggest competition for the conference crown will most likely be St. Thomas Academy, and that is North's last game of the season. So it may all come down to that final game to decide the conference champion. All right, let's take a look at the Otta, Otta Claremont show. Never, also, I mean the Hill Murray versus North game located at North High School. As you can see, Otta Claremont streaking down the side of the field and he kicks another goal. And folks, this next play is not the same exact play. We did not replicate this. But as you will see, Otta Claremont will be running down the field, streaking in the same exact fashion, kicking it in for a 2 0 lead for the North. There's a goal. And that is Otto Next Claremont. goal we got, Claremont decides to pass it off to number zero. Philip Tao, who makes a great spin and a great kick right past the goalie. For his quick score, North goes up three to nothing, giving them a comfortable lead. And the next goal comes 10 minutes into the second half. Claremont again with this goal. He is just unstoppable. Somebody stop this kid. Score four to nothing North. Claremont now with the hat trick. Three goals on the day. Now look at this one. A loose ball out in front of the net is a perfect opportunity for Claremont to score again. He curves the ball into the top corner for his fourth goal of the night. Score five to nothing North. Hill Murray did not put up any defense. 
Busquets. North now an advantage running toward the goal. Number 10, Busquets. Judy passes it ahead perfectly for number 13, Corey Polarski. His first goal on the night, Judy's fourth assist. Number 17, Tyvon Bang has a few nice moves here uh, to get it past the defenders. The Hill Murray goalie makes the initial save, but the ball, but the ball comes back to number 11, Zhang Sang Tao with a follow-up shot. That's the last goal of the game. The final score would be 7-0 North in a dominant game. An absolute blowout. Atta Clareman had four goals uh, with one assist. Watch out, guys. North Boys Soccer Squad is looking like a hard team to beat. That's right. And unfortunately for the Pioneers, they didn't look so good there. But we did follow the Pioneers on to their next Metro East Conference game, which actually took place last night. And you see it was at Tartan, Tartan playing host to Hill Murray. Start this one off a little bit slow. Spent about the first five minutes playing along the far sideline. A lot of balls going in and out of bounds. Just a bit of a slow play as these two young teams kind of try to feel each other out. But finally, uh, about 11 minutes in the game, we'll get to that shortly. Here at about 11 minutes into the game, you see Sean Little, number 21, makes some moves and pass it nicely into Ken Boblitz, who shoots towards the net, takes a deflection off a Tartan defender's foot, and arcs Number over the goalie 10, to give Hill Murray the one the to nothing on the advantage. The there, and a little bit later, little Hill Murray on the attack a once again, but goalie Sebastian Avila for the Tartan Hill Titans Hill comes off his line and it scoops that one up. Hill now Tartan with a chance of their own as Shua Mua shoots from outside the box, takes a deflection, but Taylor Major is there and he has it measured. Lamb this one coming a little bit later with Hill Murray on the attack again. Cross goes in. Avila hits it off the crossbar. And Tartan somehow keeps it out of the net to keep this thing at one to nothing. As you see Jurgensen hit it wide there when the ball finally came back to him. We'll take another look at this one. As you see Avila just touches it up onto the crossbar and I don't know how Hill Murray wasn't able to put this one away. Good job by the two Tartan defenders on the goal line, backing up their keeper. And that one just goes a little bit wayward. We only have one goal in this one. Hill Murray wins it one to nothing to get their first win in the Metro East Conference. Now we'll take a look. Had some more boys soccer standings as it's still early season for White Bear Lake, but they are winless on the year. They opened up conference play with a close defeat to Creighton Durham Hall last Thursday, one to nothing, and played a very good Minneapolis Southwest team and lost that one, one to nothing as well. White Bear continues conference play against Stillwater tomorrow. Well, now coming up after the break, we will wrap up our very first episode of the new Sports Pass season by taking a look at what Hill Murray has been up to with their new stadium upgrades. Don't go anywhere. We will be back in a minute. You're doing great. Let's just, we're going to try this again, okay? Okay. Wheels, pedals, handlebar, brakes. Sit up straight, keep your weight in the center, keep your eyes on the road, hands on the grips, button to see. If we feel ourselves falling, what do we do? Just, just keep, keep pedaling. Good girl. Now remember, it's all about balance and steering. Steer with your hands, steer with your body. Steer into the corners and you stay out of trouble. And the bell's your buddy, so go ahead and ding that. All right, you ready? Here we go. Pedal, honey, pedal. <laughs> go, you're a bike rider. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Most party fouls, not a big deal. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. TV19 sports fans, do you find yourself wondering exactly which games we will cover or where you can find them? Well, you can find the answer to that on our social media pages. We post important information like that on Facebook at facebook.com slash TV19 sports. You can go to the page and click the like button to stay updated on all your Fab Five sports teams. Well, welcome back to the first episode of Sports Path in the fall sports season. We have showed you a lot 
of football and soccer highlights, but we still have a few things to wrap up before we send you on your way. We want to start another new segment here on Sports Path. This segment will be called Players of the Week and will feature some of the best Fab Five athletes each week. We will look at all the games over the previous two weeks and find the best male and female athletes out of all of your Fab Five schools. This week, we want to feature two Matamidi athletes. Our selection for the Male Athlete of the Week is senior running back number one, Jalen Fry. He ran for 218 yards on 27 rushes and watched one touchdown helping Matamidi absolutely obliterate Tartan 31 to nothing on the ninth. Our female athlete of the week is senior goalie number 18, Kennedy Begren, who helped her team win none, one to nothing over Mounds View, as she had 14 shots against her and saved them all. Here on Sports Path, hard work does not go unnoticed, and to all you varsity athletes in the Fab Five, that the next athlete of the week could be you. So keep up the good work, guys, and congratulations. That's right. All I can say is, how does my man have 200 yards and only one score? Well, as you know from watching Matamidi lacrosse, they obviously distribute the ball very well. That's right. I mean, they won the game anyway, so what does that matter? Exactly. All right, well, next, we're going to show you a wonderful package all about the stadium upgrades at Hill Murray. It's really great. You don't want to miss this, so take a look. Hill Murray gave me a lot. Graduated in 1991. All my siblings went to Hill Murray. Two sons go here now. I was a student here. I graduated in 88. Track was a key highlight of my experience here. I created lifelong friendships and just life skills that I have taken with me. The school speaks for itself. They come here for academics and finish off with extracurriculars. In uh, the early 70s, when the schools merged, we uh, uh, worked to create the stadium here and put the field together and uh, laid out the track. I remember picking rocks off the field, I remember laying sod, I remember measuring the track. It's interesting to return because there really hasn't been much at all uh, done as far as improvements. My third year, Brother Francis Carr handed out a wish list that, of things they needed. And right at the top in 1978 was new all-weather track. The lights have been added and, and that's really all that I can see that's happened in, in 40 years here. The stadium needs work everywhere really. The track, the soccer field, football field, bleachers. The last time we hosted a track meet here was in 1984. The problem became the rain would come and you couldn't get back on the track for three days and it's still like that. Uh, you shouldn't have to cancel the track meet because it's drizzling that day. You know what really bothers me is when I'm flying in, you go over Benilde High School and Breck, St. Thomas, and their fields are melting and you see their stadium and the logo is right below you. And you think, why doesn't Hill Murray have that? Our neighbors, North St. Paul, Tartan have the turf, have the track, Matamita has it, Stillwater is getting it. So where we draw our kids from, all these communities, they have the nice facilities. Oh, I would hate to compare us with other facilities. We really don't have a track. The new stadium would have, it would have complete turf, which obviously is maintenance free. But the really exciting part is all 21 activities that we have in athletics could participate and use. If there's moments that it's not used, we can rent it out to help support it. We're going to have a donor wall that kind of has different levels of commitment and um, it'll show the success that people do have when they leave this place. We'd have a place to go and they could have safe competitive practices. We could work them hard and have a track. It's more than just the, the Friday night game. It really can get more students involved in, uh, in activities that are going to be, help them be successful in their lives. It's time to bring us kind of to the future now because this is what I played on and this is what people before me played on. So I hope somebody out there has some, has some not super deep pockets, but just some caring pockets that they would like to help and just whatever they can do would really help.
Well, that was a great look at the history of the old Hill Murray Stadium and a look at what the future might be. Definitely a school and a program that's deserving of such an upgrade. Well, we are almost wrapped up for the show, but we want to leave you with a final few things. First off, we have gone the whole show without mentioning volleyball, but for all you volleyball fans, we will have highlights in a couple of weeks for you and break down the standings. There are also other fall sports underway, including swimming. In fact, another community station in the area, CTV, shout out, did a White Bear Lake swimming broadcast. The swim meet will be, on, will be airing here on TV19 in the future, so take a look at the website for details on when you can watch it. White Bear Lake ended up coming on top against Roseville, so you don't want to miss it while it airs right here on TV19. We've got a few upcoming broadcasts we want to tell you about. As soon as that graphic gets up on the screen, John, you want to go through some of these? All right, on the 16th, we got North versus Tartan football. On the 20th, we got boys soccer, Matamidi versus North. And then right after that is the boys and girls game. But the boys game is at 5, and the girls game is at 7. On the 22nd, we got volleyball, North versus Hill Murray. On the 23rd, we got football, Tartan versus Park. On the 23rd, we got football, Hill Murray versus Matamidi. Then we got some boys soccer, some more football. We got a lot coming to you on TV Sports 19 schedule this year. And I tell you, some of the key ones is North versus Hill Murray, as we will definitely be covering that game, as Hill Murray's got their new coach, Pete Bursich, and he's doing a good job so far. That's right, former Viking player as well as a Viking radio uh, analyst. Uh, very exciting things for the Hill Murray Pioneers and their football program. Uh, just going to have a lot of great content coming to you this fall here on TV19 Sports. So look forward to that. We also have, of course, episodes of Sports Path every other week, um, airing 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. This one was on the 14th. My Minnesota math tells me the next one will be on the 28th. So we look forward to that. And John, how did it feel with your first episode? How does it feel to be on this side of the camera? Uh, it's a lot crazy. Last year, being behind the camera, it was, it was very fun to watch. But now that you're up here, you got the bright lights. It's very, it's very cool. Well, you did a fine job, John. We look forward to having you all season long. And we look, we look forward to having all of you fans here as well as we bring you all the exciting action from the Metro East Conference. Of course, we'll catch you up in anything football, anything soccer, anything volleyball, as well as all different news from all the other sports involved here in the East Metro. Can't wait for everything to get underway and get more towards uh, playoff time and all that good stuff. Well, John... I want to thank you once again. So for John Miller, thank you. Sam Erickson, and for everybody else here at TV19, I want to thank you for watching Sports Path. We'll see you next time.